Good morning, my beloved. It is good to be with you today. The title of this morning's sermon is Longing for Light and the Promise of God's Messiah. In this message, we will delve into the scriptures and reflect upon the significance of God's promise, the darkness we face, and the hope and redemption brought by Jesus in the light of the world. So let us bring out our Bibles and turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, and we're going to look at verses 2 through 7. That is the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. But before we delve into the Word, let us go to the Lord in prayer seeking His guidance and His enlightenment as we explore His promises. Father, we come before You with hearts filled with gratitude and anticipation. We gather now in the presence of our gracious and merciful Lord. It is in this sacred space and this place we seek your divine wisdom and understanding as we reflect upon your word. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come just now. Open our hearts and minds. Illuminate the words of Isaiah that we may grasp the profound significance of God's promise and the hope it brings to our lives. In the name of Jesus we pray, and everyone said, Amen. The first point that I'd like to look at this morning is going to come from uh, verses 2 through 3. It's the darkness of the world in which we live. So join me now as we read from the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 3, starting with verse 2. Quote, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder." Close quote. Dear friends, as we humbly read from Isaiah here, we observe that the world in which we live is shrouded in darkness. Sin has permeated every aspect of our lives, leaving us trapped in spiritual darkness. Despite our endeavors to find fulfillment in worldly pleasures, a sense of emptiness and loss pervades our existence. The consequences of sin have manifested themselves in broken relationships, wars, injustices, and widespread suffering. And there's no time of the year that, it, that that is more so than during the Christmas holiday season. Why? Because we have this idyllic look of how there should be peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Unfortunately, that's not the case, is it? And then when we see that that's not the case, that can drive many of us into, into depression. This darkness has effectively separated us from the loving presence of God. Allow me to paint a picture for you. Imagine being lost in a dense and desolate forest, enveloped in darkness, feeling panic and despair. In this darkness, we stumble and fall, unable to find our way out. Has anyone ever felt that way? Is anyone feeling that way now? You see, the darkness engulfs us. It leaves us hopeless and helpless. Similarly, our sin has left us lost, wandering aimlessly in the darkness, yearning for light, to guide our way. So, how are we going to apply these teachings to our lives? 
with all things considered, it is essential that we recognize the darkness prevailing in our lives. That's where we have to do a self-assessment. We've got to be honest, not only with ourselves, but we have to be honest with God. We have to acknowledge that we have a desperate need for the light of Christ. And only through Him can we escape the darkness of sin, be reconciled with God, and find true purpose and fulfillment. But we must first approach God with humility. We must confess that we have willingly embraced the darkness of sin. Then we must affirm our readiness to surrender our lives to Jesus, who is indeed the source of eternal light and salvation. The second point I'd like to speak about this morning is the promise of the Messiah. And that we will see in verses 4 through 7. So as we continue in Isaiah here, the Bible says, beginning in verse 4, quote, For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Close quote. For those of, that you, of you who are interested, I am reading this morning from the New International Version, the NIV. Beloved, in the thick of our darkness, God has not abandoned us. In these verses, we see the promise of a Messiah who brings hope and liberation to a people living in the shadow of darkness. Throughout the Old Testament, God faithfully promised to send a Messiah, a Savior, who would both illuminate the world with his light and offer salvation. This promise gave hope to the Israelites who eagerly awaited their Savior's revival and, ar and arrival. This Messiah would free them from the bondage of sin and restore their relationship with God. This promise instilled hope in the hearts of the Israelites as they eagerly awaited the arrival of of their long-awaited Messiah. The Messiah would free them from the bondage of sin, restore their relationship with God, and bring about redemption. And that is exactly what God does with each and every one of us. I want you to imagine for a moment a weary traveler walking through a dense forest. He's in utter darkness, or she. When suddenly a distant light appears, serving as a beacon of hope and guiding the traveler towards safety. I like to also use this analogy of a, a ship and it's being tossed to and fro on the stormy seas. And on this ship there are seasoned seamen but yet they are fearing for their very lives because of the intensity of the storm and the waves. And yet, there it is, a glimmer of a light. Yes, it's the light. It's from a lighthouse. Jesus Christ is indeed that lighthouse. And in the very same way, God's promise of a Messiah 
serve as a light on our spiritual journey, providing hope and pointing us toward redemption. Now, in view of this promise, let us hold on to hope in our darkest moments. You see, the devil attacks us when we are at the darkest times and the darkest moments in our lives. He wants us to be feel that there is no hope. But we need to hold on, knowing that God is faithful and His plans never fail. You see, God has a distinct plan for each and every one of us. He triumphed over sin and death through the birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension of, of His Son, Jesus Christ. So let us trust in His perfect timing and be encouraged to go forth and persevere, knowing that the light of the Messiah will shine upon us. The third and final point this morning is the light of Christ. Returning to Isaiah verses 2 and 3, we are reminded that in due time, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, as the light of the world, and its significance in our lives. Once again, starting in verse 2. Quote, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. Close quote. Beloved, in the fullness of time, God faithfully fulfilled His promise by sending His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. He didn't send Him one second early. He didn't send Him one second late. But He sent Him in the fullness of time. Jesus is the true light that has pierced through the darkness, bringing hope, healing, and salvation. Through his death, life, and resurrection, Jesus conquered sin and death, offering us the opportunity to be reconciled with God and experience eternal life. Through his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus conquered sin and death, offering us the opportunity to be restored to our relationship with God and to experience eternal life in Him. The imagery presented in these verses is powerful and evocative. It speaks of a profound transformation from darkness to light. It reminds us that the world was once enveloped in darkness, trapped in the chains of sin, with no hope or means of escape. But in His boundless love and mercy, God shone His radiant light upon us, forever altering the course of humanity. Imagine a metaphorical sunrise after a long, cold night. As the darkness dissipates, the sun's rays start to bring warmth and joy and the promise of a new beginning. And in a similar manner, Jesus, the light of the world, dispels the darkness of sin, offering forgiveness, love, and the opportunity to start anew. Through Him, we can experience a radical transformation, an awakening from a spiritual slumber into a vibrant, fulfill life in Christ. We must respond to the light of Christ, and we need to do that by surrendering our lives to Him. We need to trust in His redemptive work. As we walk in His light, we are called to live as children of light, sharing His love, mercy, and compassion with those around us. Let us be transformed by the light of Christ reflecting His glory in all that we say and do. 
longing for light and the promise of God's Messiah alludes to the deep yearning for salvation and hope that has been ever present throughout the history of mankind. The concept of a promised Messiah, a Savior, who would bring light and redemption to a dark and broken world, has resonated with people across cultures and generations. This longing has been driven by three factors. The recognition of human brokenness and the need for restoration. The hope for divine intervention in the face of suffering and the belief in the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. Firstly, the recognition of human brokenness and the need for restoration has driven the longing for a Messiah. Throughout history, humanity has grappled with its own imperfections, experiencing suffering, injustice, and moral failings. This awareness of our brokenness has led individuals and communities to desire a solution beyond their own capabilities. The promise of a Messiah, an anointed individual empowered by God to bring about deliverance and restoration has served as a beacon of hope, offering the possibility of healing and redemption for a wounded world. Secondly, the hope for divine intervention in the face of suffering plays a vital role in the longing for a Messiah. Throughout human history, individuals and societies have faced immense and seemingly insurmountable challenges such as natural disasters, wars, oppression, or personal hardships. In times of darkness and despair, people have sought solace and reassurance in the belief that a divine figure will intervene, bringing comfort, justice, and relief from suffering. The promise of a Messiah represents the hope that God will visibly manifest His power and His mercy, playing an active role in transforming the human condition. Lastly, the belief in the fulfillment of ancient prophecies has also contributed to the longing for a Messiah. Across religious traditions, numerous prophecies foretold the coming of a chosen one who would bring salvation and establish a new era of peace and righteousness. These pro prophecies passed down through generations have fueled the collective longing for the arrival of a Messiah who would bring fulfillment to these ancient prophecies and promises. The faith in the fulfillment of these prophecies has generated a sense of anticipation and urgency, inspiring individuals to hold on to the hope that the Messiah is indeed coming. Beloved friends, as we have reflected on the promise of God's Messiah, who brings light into our darkness, I believe there may be some here today who are longing for that light to shine brightly in their lives. Friend, you may feel trapped in the darkness of sin, struggling with guilt, shame, or the weight of your past. But hear me, and hear me good. There is hope. Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah, stands ready to bring light forgiveness, and transformation to all who call upon His name. He invites you right now to come to Him, just as you are, 
with all your burdens, fears, and doubts. He is the answer to the longing in your heart. And He longs to meet you right where you're at. Meet you right here. If you desire to embrace the light of Christ, to receive His forgiveness, and experience the freedom that comes from surrendering your life to Him, I invite you to respond today. Folks, the altar is open. And you at home, the altar of your heart is open. And I encourage you to step out in faith and make your way forward. Come, find peace and hope and restoration in the presence of our Savior. Whether you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you are a believer but be desire a renewed commitment to following Him faithfully, this is your opportunity to respond. Do not let fear or doubt hold you back. Jesus is waiting with arms wide open, ready to receive you and usher you into the light of his blessed love. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the work you are doing in the lives of those who have responded to your call today. We pray that as they embrace the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, you would continue to pour out your grace upon them, bringing healing, forgiveness, and restoration. Grant them the strength and courage to walk in the light, being transformed by your love each day. In the name of Jesus we pray, and everyone said, Amen. We invite you to leave your comments in the comment box below and we encourage you to check the appropriate thumbs up or thumbs down button regarding the sermon, music, etc. Your feedback is essentially our report card. We value your comments, so please let us know how we're doing. If the Holy Spirit has moved you, whether to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Maybe the Spirit has moved you to read it, dedicate your life to Christ. Or perhaps you just have some questions as a result of a particular sermon or the ministry in general. We would love to hear from you. We invite one and all who have the desire to join our ministry as prayer warriors. In order to do that, all you need to do is click on that little red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner of the video. That said, we invite you to leave your prayer requests and praises in the comments section below. Due to the fact our ministry is a public forum, we ask that you keep your prayer requests and praises brief. And for everyone's safety, please refer to yourselves or others on a first name basis only. That's all the time we have for today. May God richly bless you and yours. Have a blessed rest of your day, a blessed week in the Lord. Until we meet again, beloved flock, I bid you adieu. Good morning.